this here is what they call a PID. Yeah, so we had somebody request a video on PID, talking about them, mm -hmm. um, what machines you can put them on, why you would, if you were in your warranty. They even asked how you do it. I don't know if you want to get into that, but I figured I'd pose the Ask the Expert Experts question to you. <laughs> Let's get an expert. <laughs> Where is one, right? Just you, Gail. <laughs> I represent the experts around here. Exactly. Uh, a PID. Yes. We just turned this machine on. Mm -hmm. What we have is we have this machine set to bring the boiler up to 204 degrees. And this is the Quick Melt Alexia. Exactly. And I'm going to just show you this first. You can run it up to whatever temperature you want. All right. Or down. We have it at 204. Okay. What this does is it you take off the existing thermostats on the boiler and you put on the ones that are attached to the PID. Mm -hmm. It brings it up to 204 degrees or whatever you've set it for and it keeps it within one degree. Okay. Versus on a typical boiler, there would be, it could be as much as a 15 degree drop and alternately rise. When a boiler is sitting there and it's at its hottest, it actually heats it just a little bit above what it really needs, above mm -hmm. the 204. Mm -hmm. As it's sitting there, obviously it's going to cool down. It cools down to maybe 10, 15 degrees lower. Mm -hmm. Another thermostat says, hey, we're getting cold here, let's kick in. Kicks in and brings it back up to that 210 or so, and then it's a cycle. I see. If you brew at those low temperatures, Below the 204, uh, your shots are going to be sour. Okay. If they're going to be under extracted. Under extracted. If they're too hot, they're bitter. Okay. But you'll this temperature is very important. So these, um, we traditionally see these on people will retrofit a single boiler. It's only for single boiler machines, or well, actually it could be dual boilers, but not heat exchangers. It's okay. only for boiler machines. And you can have one for the steam side to mm -hmm. control the steam steam temperature, mm -hmm. and you can have one to control the brew temperature. If you have a double boiler. If you have a double boiler. Okay, so we have this one on the Alexia. So it's also popular to put these on the Ranchilio. Ranchilio. So um, if people do this, it will void their warranty if it's still under warranty if they're doing it themselves, right? If they do it themselves. If they have the uh, the retailer do it that they buy the machine from. It'll be fine. It'll be fine, yeah. And what about if they find somebody, like if they have a Sylvia, if they find a Ranchilio certified repair person to yeah, do it? I don't know. I don't know. I know that we cover the Ranchilio service here on our machines. Um, certified, or is it a warranty repair center? You know, there's all kinds of different yeah. terminology for that kind of stuff. You could have somebody that says they're a certified center. And all that means is they take that machine in and they'll work on it. That doesn't mean. I mean, if like, let's training. say somebody brought a Sylvia to us that was still under warranty that they bought somebody somewhere else, and they brought it to us. If we put a pit in it, would that be would that void the warranty? I would recommend that they talk to the retailer they that they purchased it from. It from. Yeah, okay. I would, you know, like if it was if we sold it, we cover the warranty on the exactly. Machines. What if they had a Joe Schmo down the street that says he's certified? Yeah. Uh, you know. Which we have run into that. Yeah, and then if people do it themselves, obviously that would also mm -hmm. warrant do, do, uh, void the warranty. Void the warranty. Um, I okay. suggest they check with the retailer they purchased from before they go doing it. All right. So um, now this is up to temperature. Let's say I want this machine to steam. I put on the steam. Now this is not in play anymore. It's not controlling anything. I see. The machine kicks back in and the steam thermostat is what's going to bring it up to steam temperature. And then we'll actually watch it as it climbs up. Yep. It'll go up to, to steam temperature. I think it's like 295 on this machine. Wow. Hot. Hot. Okay. So that's how it works. Um, why would you want to put it on? Mm -hmm. To get a sweeter shot, a better shot. Mm -hmm. The temperature control is important. Mm -hmm. The other thing is if people are doing different origins of um, blends mm -hmm. and single origins, mm -hmm. Um, you brew some of them at different temperatures. So they can get a better flavor out of a single origin bean. So they like to tweak the temperature just a little bit and dial it in for that particular bean mm -hmm. and it'll be a better shot. Okay. So this thing is rising. But anyway, it, it, it'll get up to about 295 degrees and it'll kick out. Cool. All right. So that's how, the, that's how a PID, now Kat, do you know what PID stands for? Pretty intense dude. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs>
honestly, I asked you because I can't remember what it stands for. It's like pressure or something. It's like three. I looked it up to see what the, it was an acronym for, um, and there was like actually a page that says the acronym for PID, and there's like 200 different <laughs> variations pretty of what PID intense, could stand for. Pretty intense. Dude. Dude. I like that. Yeah, I like that too. Works for me. All right. Thanks, Gail. You're welcome.